Hello, Obofile. Hello, Obofile. Today, we're talking about how to practice some new music, how to learn stuff that's totally new, and the way to learn it is just to run through it at full tempo over and over again until you magically get it, no matter how many mistakes you make. This was so easy, I'm out of here. Okay, actually, no. I'm, that's terrible advice. I can't believe that guy said that. What is he thinking? What we're actually going to talk about is the correct way to learn something brand new and it is not just to run through it over and over again until you magically get it. So, let's get into it. Wait. Let's say you have some new music to learn. There are three key things you can do to make the learning process easier. The first one is just to familiarize yourself with the music. So find whatever you're gonna learn and just listen to it. Go find recordings on Spotify, on YouTube. There's so much music out there now recorded. It's super easy to find something, some performance of it. Even if it's not the best audio quality, go find 10 other performances of it somewhere. You'll find something. Now that only works if there are recordings. If it's something that's brand new composed for you, that's a little, a little more complicated, but most things that you're gonna learn, especially if you're a student, are gonna be things that already exist in the world and that have recordings. So I have here a Telemann Fantasy, and I'm going to demonstrate how I would learn one. I picked out number seven. I thought it was kind of interesting, and I've never learned it before, and I think it'd be cool to play it. So I'll learn the first uh, phrase or so of this fast section so that we can go through the second key tool that you can use to help you learn something. And after you've got it in your ear, after you've listened to it a few times, you wanna make sure that you're able to kind of reproduce that in your mind. So just take a minute and meditatively think and sing it in your head or sing it out loud. And just kind of go through and get a feel for how the music goes without the oboe. If you do that, then putting it on the oboe is a lot easier, but we don't want to just play through it yet. The last key thing that you want to do is to pick out a chunk that you're going to learn at a time. Don't just read through it. So for me, I'm going to play the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 measures. And I'll put that on the screen so you guys can see it. And I'm going to put it really slow with a metronome. So I have a metronome clicking every big beat. So it's going two, three, two, three, two, three. And I'll play it slow to my one designated chunk. And my goal is to play it correctly. And in fact, I'm gonna play it even slower just to hammer home the point because I don't wanna make any mistakes. Now the key isn't just to play it slowly. I've talked about playing things slowly a thousand times before, this is new. The new tool that you can use is to gamify your practice a little bit. So I've set up three tokens. And every time I play it correctly, I'm gonna move one of those tokens past the goal line. And every time I play it incorrectly, I've got to move all of the tokens that I had done correctly back to the starting point. So the goal is to play it three times absolutely perfectly in a row. So here we go. Two, three. Let's get the water up. Okay. Two, three. And so I've played it correctly once, I'll move one of the tokens. And I'm going to move this little B guy over. Little genie B. Here we go for attempt number two.
was harder for me to keep my focus, but I'm glad we got it together at least to play it through. So now we can move the second token, and I'm going to move the trombone mouthpiece over. So here goes the trombone mouthpiece over by the genie, and now we're going for attempt number three. Now at this point, it gets a little bit high stakes, so remember to stay relaxed and reproduce the feeling. I'm just going to get the water out. If you need help getting the water out, you can check out the video I made on that up here in the corners or in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. So just give me a second. All right, here we go. Third attempt. Keep it cool. Okay, so, I started on the wrong beat, and it totally threw me off, so we have to move the tokens all the way back. So two tokens back at the beginning, we're going to try three attempts one more time. Here we go. Here's version number one. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and move the tuba mouthpiece over to the goal line. And next, uh, we'll hopefully not miss anymore. But as you do it, that's the fourth time I'm going to play it. I'm starting to memorize parts of it already. And I'm trying to keep my eyes moving forward to the next thing so I don't get stuck. So now we'll move the B. And now we're back to the third attempt, so hopefully we nail it this time. And each time I play, I'm trying to kind of see where the intonation of the key areas lie. So I noticed that A has been a little bit weird to place, but I'm going to try to really nail it this time. Okay, so, we'll just turn the metronome off, and after you've played it three times, then you're allowed to speed it up, or add more to it, or go to a different chunk. Not only is it more satisfying to play and practice, but you'll keep and retain a lot more of your practicing than if you just kind of brute force attempt to practice it at full speed. Because if I don't know it yet, if I try to practice it at full speed, I'm going to run into issues. So, as you can tell, I'm not ready for that yet. I need to go back and practice it slow and do my organized practice so that I can learn the fantasy and not just be stumbling over it my whole life. I hope that you got a lot out of this Technique Tuesday. If you like these oboe tips videos, don't forget to subscribe below and like so that you know it helps out the channel. And when in doubt, play beautifully.